Maybe not. Maybe I'll lose it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, this is our first seminar for the Habitat 3 ESOXI network, and very pleased to introduce Dory Reeves, who's leading this initiative and hoping to get uh, some participation and collaboration from others on this very important project. So I'll hand over to Dory. Thanks very much, Melanie, and welcome everybody. Um, my name is Dory Rees, I'm Professor of Planning at the University of Auckland. Um, with me in the room today are two colleagues from, um, from the university along with Melanie. And before I start, I'm going to um, simply ask them to introduce themselves so that um, you're aware of who's in the room. We're recording this session for the ESOXI network. Um, so we're in the University of Auckland making a recording of the seminar, which will then be of use to various groups around the country afterwards. So to my left is Nikki. Yep, so I'm Nikki Harry. I'm the Associate Dean Sustainability in the Faculty of Science here, and I'm also in the School of Psychology. Thanks very much. Hi, my name is Roger, and uh, I'm a PhD student, and Professor Doris is my supervisor in the School of Architecture and Planning. I'm in my uh, kind of fourth year <laughs> in my PhD, yeah. Hi, I'm Z. Um, from the uh, Department of, of Property Business School. Sorry, I, uh, yeah, it seems that I'm not sure now on screen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just, just hear my voice. Yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's better, thanks. Yeah. That's great. So we've got um, the faculties of science, um, Nikkei, and the business school represented, which is great. So the purpose of this um, introduction is to literally set the scene to explain what the network is aiming to do. Um, and what we hope to do um, later on is have a discussion about how we can actually make it happen in practice. So everybody who's watching will be able to contribute to this online afterwards. So by way of introduction, Monday was Habitat Day um, around the world. And uh, right at the moment, there's the prize giving for the photo competition, which the University of Auckland was running. So anybody wants to see the photographs um, on the theme was public spaces and cities. They're in the general foyer of the library across, mm -hmm. across the road mm -hmm. in Auckland. Yeah. So this seminar has been organised as part of a process of actually thinking about how we produce a State of New Zealand report for Habitat 3 next year. So what I'll do is I'll provide some context and background. Um, and then lead into a discussion. So we'll talk about context and background. We'll talk about the mechanics of using ESOCSI as a platform for producing the report, which is an experimental um, project initiative in itself. And then take some questions about how we can actually take it forward. Um, Melanie's going to be um, just moving the screen. So uh, what we'll do now is just go on to the next slide. And then we'll be able to see the slides, and hopefully everybody else uh, will be able to see them in due course. So that's just the title slide, and we just need the next one. Um, the right hand click should be. Yeah, right hand the, arrow. I, I the right hand box. arrow. Right hand arrow should move it. That would normally move it. Mm -hmm. Or the left click. Or the left click on the mouse. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, it's a. So um, the, yeah. That might be magnifying it in. Try uh, or try that little arrow. Yeah. yeah. Try that again. That's great. Oh, Excellent. That's great. So now we've cracked the technology, we're ready to go. So the reason I put this slide up is this gives you the overall timeline and we'll zoom in in a little part of it in a second. And the question I'm asking is where were you in these dates? Um, it makes me feel quite ancient in many ways. Um, uh, 
Over on the left-hand side, Habitat 1 in Vancouver, back in 1976, that was 39 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was an undergraduate course in geography at the Durham University of England. Habitat 1 we were aware of, and some of the lectures were clearly very involved in it because it was such a fundamental mm -hmm. kind of shift in the way we were doing things. And then the next key date on this timeline is 1992 with the Rio Summit. Now, by that stage, that was 28 years ago, and I was working in Sheffield City Council. So, so that, that summit was critical because it was starting to influence how we actually approach metropolitan planning. And so these global agendas were getting people to think about, okay, so in the next iteration of our citywide plan, how are we going to actually create a more sustainable city? So that conversation was happening then. So, um, so that was 1987, the Brundtland Report, 28 years ago, and then the Rio Summit, 1992, um, which was then really starting to influence the content of plans. Um, if you want to zoom into the next slide, it just focuses in on that first. Um, so we got 1976, 1987, 1992, and then 1996. Um, so by that stage, um, I was actually teaching in Glasgow in the UK. Um, I wasn't able to get to Habitat 2. Some colleagues actually did. Um, and it was instrumental in actually providing a baseline. It was another comparison about how far did we actually move between 80 Seven and um, ninety-six. Were you involved in any of these earlier ones, Nikki? No, no. I, di I didn't discover the environment story until nineteen um, two thousand and seven. <laughs> Until climate change came along, you're making me feel really <laughs> not, but not due to age. So we due to living on another planet. I was off the earth until approximately ten years. Ago. I suppose it reflects the fact that I was working in local governments and I was working in a very progressive local authority in the UK, Sheffield City Council, highly left-wing socialist republic, if you like, of South Yorkshire. Um, but it actually tapped in, into a lot of, of the global initiatives and used them as a political vehicle as much as a social vehicle. Um, now, one of the, um, so if you, if you go to the next slide, um, that's the key, 1992 was a key date for Agenda 21. Okay, so I'm now just focusing on the key outputs. And then the next slide um, is the Habitat Agenda, which came out as a result of the Istanbul Habitat 2. Okay, now in the text below here, I've said, okay, so the two main goals um, are adequate shelter for all and sustainable human settlements in an urbanizing world. Um, and implementing a plan of action based on these goals. Now, one of the key things about Habitat 2 and 1996 was that um, it, didn't, it didn't really specify the mechanisms by which we were going to achieve this at a local government or a national level. So again, it was a great UN declaration, a big sign off. Everybody signed up to it. I don't think any country didn't at the time. But it was recognised that a real weakness was a lack of sufficient implementation mechanisms. And this is actually one of the reasons why for Habitat 3, there's such a focus on how can we actually achieve, how can we actually achieve what we need to? And um, there's a big emphasis on local government level as a, as a result of that. Um, if we go on to the next slide, that will take us up to this point. Um, now, this is a slide that's been prepared by um, Habitat 3 team, and I've actually inserted some extra material into it. But it gives you an idea of, of the um, preparatory meetings and the time frame for those in the run-up to the October meeting next year. So the, le the language is PrepCom, which is PrepCom, the pre-meetings pre, um, at each of those stages. So Habitat 3 will be in Quito and Ecuador in October next year. And the focus will be on reinvigorating the commitment to sustainable urbanization. Um, and that's quite telling in itself. Because of what's been happening in, in all of the other fields, and we'll come to that in the next slide as well, um, in sustainable development goals and climate change. Um, we've recently had the TPP mm -hmm. debates. Um, there's so much happening. Mm -hmm. They all interlink, 
and Habitat 3, um, it, was designed, it was designed by the UN. We will have Habitat 3. It's a, di, it's a bi-decennial conference every 20 years. And let's use it to focus attention on, OK, the urban agenda, how can it start to address sustainable urbanization, given what we know is coming out of the Sustainable Development Goals and the Climate Change mm. Conference and everything else that's happening. Mm. So really complicated. So the next slide is simply a screenshot from the Sustainable Development Goals, which were unanimously endorsed by the UN General Assembly on September the 25th. Okay, so that's a key starting point. And the PrepCon meetings for Habitat 3, one of the key things we were waiting on was to see this endorsement. There are some really key goals that impact, they all impact on sustainable urbanization in the debate. Um, goal 10 uh, talks about reducing inequality within and among countries. Goal 11, making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Mm. Okay, so goal 11 is particularly important in the context of the of the debate that we're talking about. And the next slide, I think, is simply um, a reference to the really important up and coming conference in Paris right. on the climate change. So that will provide another really significant um, starting point for then the Habitat 3 work. So by that stage, we'll have sustainable development goals in place. We'll know what the climate change targets, if any, have been agreed. And then we can say, OK, so how does that affect um, what we need to be doing at the urban level? And the next slide. And that's um, the cover sheet for the conference itself next year reinvigorating the global commitment to sustainable urbanization. Now, the next two slides go into some detail, um, and you can go to the next one. And what I've done here is pulled off two screenshots which show the intention of Habitat 3 um, and a bit more detail about the new urban agenda. So the aim of Habitat 3 is we, need, we want to come out of Habitat 3 with what's called the new urban agenda, which will actually be much more specific about the mechanisms about how we're going to achieve mm -hmm. sustainability, okay, rather than the platitudes and great statements in the past. So um, the intention is that it will result in these things, embracing urbanization at all levels, which is particularly important in the New Zealand context because the urban is relative. Talk about urban and Pacific Islands, you're talking about what we might call as very small villages or clusters of, of um, settlements. So the word human settlement is really important there. Um, talk about um, urbanization on a global scale and people immediately start to think about the huge cities that are growing at a vast mm -hmm. rate in India and Africa. Okay. Um, integrating equity to the development agenda is another key intention because that's, again, not been um, managed. We haven't achieved that right away across the board. And that includes socioeconomic as well as gender, age, um, all the lenses that we think about in policy terms. Fostering national urban planning and planned city extension. So it's getting people to think about the national level, again, which is really interesting from a New Zealand perspective, because over the years we've moved away from thinking about the um, national plan for the country mm. and we very much think in terms of mm. um, urban areas mm. and then um, aligning and strengthening institutional arrangements with the with the outcomes of Habitat 3 and that's getting people to think about okay so is there are there governance issues that we need to take on board within the country or within the UN or within the Habitat in order then to help people achieve all these goals and the next slide um, lets us get a handle on what the current thinking is on what do we mean by the new urban agenda. So based on what we've learned from Vancouver in 76 and Istanbul in 1996, um, there seems to be a need for a focus on urban rules and regulations. Things are only going to happen 
if people have to do it or mm -hmm. if there's a framework in place. Mm -hmm. So what do they need to be? Mm -hmm. um, urban planning and design. Uh, urban planning has tended to have a very low um, uh, status internationally. We have we have relatively we have countries with hardly any planners at all. That's recognised. So how can we upskill people? How can we ensure that decent urban planning and design actually takes place? And what's the capability? What's the capacity building we need there? And then municipal finance. Where are the resources going to come from to do everything that we need? Um, so those are the three things that the new urban agenda is is going to focus on, and that's with a view to tackling that issue of how do we actually um, how do we actually provide the practical mechanisms? Mm. Okay. Now you might you might think of other um, elements which you think would be needed in a New Zealand context, or you might need to unpack each of those mm -hmm. headings in a particular way for the New Zealand mm -hmm. context. So those are the sorts of things we need to think about. Um, the next slide, and we we don't need to play this now, but if anybody's looking at this live, um, this is Dr. Close, the executive director of UN Habitat. UN Habitat has the mandate for the urban, um, but Habitat 3 is a UN conference, but because UN Habitat has got a specific mandate for looking after the urban, it's got a, it's playing a particularly important role in the run-up to Habitat 3. So this is a five or six minute segment where Dr. Close is actually talking about the background to Habitat 3 um, and the quite ambitious intentions or goals that Habitat have to, to ensure that there's quite a wide debate within countries. Um, and that leads us on to the to the next slide, um, and then we'll just skip that for now. I think. So one of the um, one of the things which every country in the UN was asked to do was produce a country report, which is a baseline document for Habitat Three, and. It's become clear over the over the last uh, few months when we've been um, checking this out that there's no intention for New Zealand to produce a state of New Zealand report at an official level. Mm -hmm. uh, the government won't do it. They don't see a need to do it. The priorities are probably elsewhere and all the rest of it. So that left a vacuum. So um, the feeling of the Habitat Steering Group was that actually, as researchers, we've got mm -hmm. a responsibility to fill that gap. And the question then started, how do we do it? Um, my view is that it would provide a really useful baseline and it would provide, it should provide a focus um, for the research community and actually generate ideas for future research. And this is just going on now to the mechanics of how we might use ESOXI to do this. So the next slide just zooms in on, and this is where Melanie's been absolutely instrumental in helping us to set things up. And actually talking through how how we might start to do this. So um, having having been introduced to ESOC Sci in the last year or so, we started to think, well, actually the platform which ESOC Sci um, gives us is a really helpful platform to um, connect with other researchers nationally. Um, that could we actually use ESOC Sci as a platform to shared draft material for instance mm -hmm. and have discussions um, we can use it as a means of providing peer review for what we put up um, it's possible to track who's who's commenting on what we can use it as a discussion platform and simply as a means of communicating more widely so we can invite people onto the network and invite non-researchers within the universities onto the network as well mm -hmm. sort of widen it out as mm -hmm. the material gets put on um, and then the next slide is simply a screenshot of the little front page of the network for somebody who hasn't, um, who's not familiar with it. So it's been set up like this. We're using the Habitat 3 button as the kind of logo for it. Um, and the next slide, I think, will show the screenshots within the network group. Um, and it is possible to zoom in, I think, mm -hmm. just by using. So to get to the, oh, right. Go ahead. the habitat, um, habitat 
this link up here. Yeah. And then you can see where the forum is. Yeah. One. Yeah, if you go back to that one, actually, yeah, and then if you use the scroll button the, uh, or scroll. the um, the right, the other, the, yes, the other button, you'll be able to zoom in. Yeah. So what we've done, and just come back out a little bit. That's fine. That's great. So what we've done is set up the network group for the Habitat Three State of New Zealand report, which we're calling it. And then within that, set up little forums for each of the chapters. So we're purposefully using the UN template um, for the country report as our mm -hmm. starting point. It gives us a nice structure which we can compare with other countries. The United States and the Netherlands um, are the only two developed countries that have produced draft reports up until very recently. Um, and they are available online. Um, but also, the, the, each chapter has got very um, set um, headings, um, as I say, really, really tight um, word count. So, in theory, we should be able to put together a report uh, once we once we establish the network of people who are willing and able to contribute. We should be able to actually produce the report relatively quickly based on people's work. Mm -hmm. um, it could be that the report itself would then develop into potential book project as people um, can see the benefit of perhaps um, adding case study material, mm -hmm. more commentary, more observations, um, and that's not a document that would sit nicely in a report, but it would then we could use a report as a basis. So that's a thought. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next slide is um, looking at what next. So th these are just some thoughts to start with. Um, if somebody was interested in contributing, they could go into the network page and then the forums. They need to sign up for ESOCSI before that. So you might know somebody who's not involved in this network now, and they may not be looking at this seminar. But actually get them involved mm -hmm. in ESOC sign, get them registered, and then they can participate. Have a look at the report templates. Um, it's available simply under the UN country reports for Habitat 3, and there's a template. So, but, Dory, just to clarify, yeah. ESOC sign um, presumably has multiple things like the UN Habitat, this is just one. Yes, yes. So, when you go to the main website, you find a whole lot of different tabs or whatever that lead you into different. Yes, so there's a networks um, tab, and if you go in there, you can choose which networks you yeah. want to belong to, and mm -hmm. so have to have three. So. And they're all closed, are they? Or like 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 you you need to um, be invited to join the network, or mm -hmm. You can join mm -hmm. it and then the person who's oh, in we'll charge of it. Oh, we'll moderate it, sort of decide yeah. whether you, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. This one is open. Okay. This one's open. Yeah. Some, some, of the, some of the network groups are closed, but this one is, is definitely open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this will have, um, this, this seminar will be there. Yeah. As well as all the report development. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, it's a bit like one of those holders of um, documents where you can work on the document online somehow and then your changes are, are taken in or something like that. Is it, it a won't document? Be as, yeah, it's not quite like that. It won't be no. as sophisticated as that. Um, the, way, um, the way it will work, and we can test this out over the next two or three weeks, is that somebody would put a piece of text up on the forum, yeah. which would relate to one of the sections. Uh, and then somebody would come in and actually use the, the discussion part of the forum to comment on it. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I see what you mean. It's not direct editing. No, no direct yeah. editing. If no. we wanted to do that, we could then link up with another Google yeah. Yeah. Doc. Um, but for this purpose, it's quite helpful to track who's commenting. Yeah, you know, I get that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So yeah, note that the UN guidelines for the country report. So this this report would would um, mirror that, and um, the aim is from now onwards. Um, you know, somebody's interested in producing text to post it up, and then 
get some feedback. So at the moment, I'm I'm drafting a little bit of text on on specifically the gender dimension. Mm -hmm. With the aim over the next two to three weeks of actually putting that up in a discussion. Um, and there are a couple of other people who are interested in 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 looking. They're certainly interested in contributing. So David Grinnington from Law is looking at the moment on the governance side of things. He's based half a year in Canada, uh, and he may he may well be able to to tap into this mm -hmm. himself later. Um, so hello, David, if you <laughs> if you happen to see this. Um, and with the intention that then David would post something mm. on the governance side and then people would be able to respond to it. Um, and I think that's, go to the next slide just in case there's something I've, um, I think these are just, this is just the cover page for the templates mm -hmm. for the actual country reports with the link below. And then the next slide. Um, again, it's just a summary of the chapter headings, um, and they pretty much cover all all the faculties and a lot of the disciplines within within a university. Um, and the final slide, um, I haven't linked up. <laughs> no, actually, go go the final slide. I think go go to the next one. Yeah, what I was trying to think of is what, um, I know that the government's not producing a um, a country report, and I thought, well, let's try and find out if there's somebody else in New Zealand working on it. So the obvious place to go to was the local government. I knew that Wellington has been doing work on resilient cities oh. as mm -hmm. part of the UN program. Um, Lauren Shiel, who I haven't had a chance to get in touch with yet, but he's. Uh, Mayor of Hastings and President of the Local Governments of New Zealand and Chair of the Commonwealth Local Government. And their organisation has produced quite an interesting document as part of the PrepCom process. And what it does highlight is the level of engagement which, which is happening amongst local governments across the world because they will be the, one of the key actors and key stakeholders mm -hmm. in actually um, mm -hmm. uh, delivering, if you like, helping to deliver. Uh, what it what it does signal is the need for all the other stakeholders to to get involved. Those are the universities as well as the um, NGOs and civil society as well. So if we can start as researchers, but then bring these other constituencies in, mm. then that would be great. So I think that that probably finishes the the, the formal part of the presentation. Um, the aim was to provide a, a background to Habitat 3 and to explain at least in introductory terms about how ESOCSI might be able to be used as a platform for producing it. So it would be really good now just to um, have a discussion have, about getting your ideas about how it might, um, how we might be able to take it forward. Um, there might be some basic questions that you just want to ask as well, just to clarify. Thanks very much, Mary. So, given that we're mm. being recorded, um, what's your name again? Oh, Z. Z. We want to make sure that you're actually in the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to join us at that stage? So we'll reconfigure ourselves to make sure that everybody's in shot. Um, and. When you're making the, the first comments um, or intervention, if you simply um, remind people what your name is and yeah. your discipline background, and then people will be able to position us. Um, is then anybody like to to start? Um, uh, well, yeah, I'm Nikki again, Faculty of Science and Psychology. Um, I, I'm you know really interested in this. I, I it's not so much that I have that specific interest in the cities per se, mm -hmm. but more in the, the general idea of living well together um, and sustainability, which does amount a lot to how we live well together in cities. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just one of the things I'm really interested in and I think is really relevant in New Zealand is that national, how you get that national level planning going because it's always struck me living in Auckland is really frustrating that the assumption is that Auckland must and will grow. This is written in the 
you know, and the stars that are sent by God. And places like Danny Burke will have all their main street shops shut mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be no capacity to have a national conversation about um, mm -hmm. about that, you know, yeah. the balance of our cities. And I've heard, mm -hmm. this may or may not be true, that New Zealand um, and the, the size of Auckland is disproportionately large in the sense that other countries tend to have more big cities than we've got. We've got mm -hmm. this one massive city, which is apparently, and, and that, to me, possibly speaks to that lack of national yeah. planning. Mm. So the one, the, the one other country that we're often compared with is Ireland. Mm. So mm. proportionately, Dublin has has something like a similar percentage mm. of the total population, and yeah. such a large um, grasp, of, you know, grip on the economy. Mm. Um, mm. Um, but it but it creates all sorts of issues. Yeah, mm. massive issues. Yeah. Um, um, and this could be an opportunity to to start to have that national discussion about what would a national plan look like, what or mm. what, what are the kinds of things it could address. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah. Um, follow up there. Um, so I'm Zee, I'm from uh, business school department of property, and I think the other thing. Um, interesting thing that uh, for the urban the kind of urban expansion or sprawling issue. And it's like a special structure of those locations, different locations um, of urban um, planning, in regard to those urban planning thing. And uh, while well, also the part like how the extent of this population, like in Auckland, it's a kind of challenge to all the uh, arranging uh, the construction, even the, how the infrastructure within the city, and how those supply of resources or the you know, logistic issues. Uh, across the entire city. And then the other thing could be, uh, I think more interesting could be like housing affordability issues mm -hmm. and how those um, homeowners or home occupiers, they would like to, uh, how they can afford those housing that's the first time for buyers or in regard to other investors um, from different, uh, well, um, different areas, I mean, the, mm -hmm. in New Zealand or in overseas. Um, how their investments could influence those uh, housing prices. And so, um, and also the affordability of houses, I think also will be related to the sustainability of the development of the city and the country, because this will also impact the potential um, uh, migrants coming over, um, mm -hmm. well, whether Auckland becomes more attractive cities or not, depending on the uh, living cost expenditures. Mm -hmm. So that's how I view at the moment. And, uh, mm -hmm. and the interesting thing about the country reports, these are these are this yeah. is a template for the whole world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you'll notice that when you get into the subheadings of the chapters, mm -hmm. um, that it will that will immediately uh, um, raise questions in your mind about how relevant they all are. To New Zealand, mm -hmm. um, so there's a lack of a cultural dimension, um, mm -hmm. which uh, which needs to be built in um, to each of the sections and the whole report itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and within in the New Zealand context, mm -hmm. the importance of the increasing diversity of the population mm -hmm. um, within mm -hmm. Auckland then raises questions about to what extent then does that feature as a an issue and a challenge. So the, the the useful thing about the, the report itself is that it sets out to provide a baseline, mm -hmm. identify the issues and the challenges in the European agenda. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. the way in which it can actually start to stimulate a, a wider discussion, a wider debate. Mm -hmm. And provide research as an opportunity to, yeah. um, to say, uh, you know, how relevant is the work that we're doing to these questions mm -hmm. uh, and to feed that research in and, and make sure it's got practical mm -hmm. use. So those titles of those chapters are all fixed for the, for, for, for the whole world? Yep. Yeah. Oh. They're established for the country reports. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, like there are countries like New Zealand, like Australia, like Canada, US, that have some similarities in terms of population, in terms of demographic kind of status that they have in terms of multiculturality or bicultural aspect. And 
these specific countries may have a specific contribution to UN Habitat 3 in terms of that bicultural, multicultural aspect. Mm -hmm. I, I'm talking specifically about that goal that you were talking about, integrating equality for, for well-being of all people living together, yeah. and how that multicultural aspect or bicultural aspect can contribute to that. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, as, as of certainly um, the last few weeks, the USA was the only one of those countries that actually had posted a draft report. Mm -hmm. um, so it could well be useful to have a look at yeah. it to see yeah. how it actually addresses mm -hmm. that particular issue. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know as yet whether there is a commitment on the part of Australia, for instance, to produce a country report. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had a chance to talk to colleagues in Australia. We have been contacted by email by someone who's a New Zealander but based in Australia, who I think will be looking at this mm -hmm. seminar at some point. And, um, and I can't remember their name, so apologies. Um, but they're really keen to be involved. Uh, that will be fascinating because if they're based in Australia more long term, they'll mm -hmm. be able to start to make those comparisons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the value space of all this, um, mm -hmm. is this based on a sort of declaration of human rights or... You know, you know, another. So, yeah. What what is the value? Yeah. Space? What is the value? I mean, presumably there is some mention of values or other UN um, yeah. declarations such as that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Habitat three is a UN conference, and so mm -hmm. all those other declarations will be will be taken as read, if you like. Yeah. They all provide yeah. their underpinning. Yeah. The conference, so that would be the value space. Yeah. But yeah, and that's that's an interesting answer because mm -hmm. it sounds like from that answer, while that's true, there hasn't been a. It sounds possibly like there's not mm -hmm. an attempt, or hasn't been one to specifically talk about how these values are, are really relevant in this particular situation. For example, mm -hmm. um, you know the 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 question of housing affordability. Um, is implicitly valued that if the housing is affordable, mm -hmm. but but there's nowhere that says things like cities should have affordable housing or something like that. That that is a basis for this. Is that what, that what you're saying? In ter in terms of UN declaration. Well, in terms, in terms of, of yeah, in terms of where this um, where the where the so it's sustainable urban development, right? Is the, the kind of overall concept here? Yeah, sustainable yeah. urbanisation. Sustainable mm -hmm. urbanisation. So, how specifically is that um, broken down into what that must achieve in terms of you know equity, in terms of environmental protection, in terms of? I'm with you. Yeah. yeah. So the the broad the broad the statements to do with equity um, are quite headline in nature. But there, there are a number of concept papers that have been produced in relation to each of the main chapters. Um, there's one on safety, one on resilience, one on equity. Um, so you can start to get a feel for how the working groups who are um, preparing the material for the Habitat 3 discussions internally, if you like, within, mm. within the UN, are actually interpreting these concepts. Um, but I think I think you'll find when you look at the concept papers as they stand at the moment, mm -hmm. they're still very general in nature, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. it will be up to countries to um, define mm -hmm. um, what is meant by equity. What are the issues in relation to mm -hmm. equity and housing? But they can be interpreted differently based on the context. Right? Like for example, when mm -hmm. you're talking about affordable housing, mm -hmm. it's nothing like base. Ground, like grounded in the, specifically about affordable house, affordable housing, but it's a, a, like a, about access to house or access to yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's mm -hmm. kind of thing. So it can be interpreted based on it in a different context. I I wonder if it's like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be. I mean, I'm conscious of the time here, and that Nikki needs to yeah. go at ten to. No, no, I need to go at about two minutes to. Oh, two to minutes to. Yeah, 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 just fractionally. Because I'm thinking yeah. that. It, this is a kind of um, this is a kind of discussion that actually could well provide um, a useful yeah. basis for a yeah. further seminar, mm -hmm. and it could be that um, 
one of the chapters or one of the themes or issues gets um, selected depending on, on, what, mm. on what people mm. are producing on. Mm. Um, and then a seminar is, is held around those. Mm. So the, yeah, but you're asking much more fundamental questions quite rightly about mm. what is the starting point? Well, that's just when because when, some, it. when someone comes in from a dis different discipline, they always yeah. think, hang on, you know, <laughs> where are you coming from? Which, yeah. you know, is, because I mean, you know, from my point of view, just mm. not, and I'm not putting on a research hat or any other kind of thing here. Mm. I'm putting on a, what conversations does New Zealand need to have hat? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I would say one of them is um, that the, the building up of provincial cities um, and the not assuming Auckland will grow seems to me to be a conversation we need to have. Mm -hmm. And another one is, um, do we want to become a culture in which some people own the homes of others as a default position? Mm -hmm. Or do we want mm -hmm. to become a culture in which people can own their own home? Mm -hmm. Because it seems to me we've drifted into a culture of landlords and tenants, mm -hmm. or we're drifting that way. Yeah. Yeah. And in a way, housing affordability helps us drift that way because it says the key point is whether you can afford the rent. <laughs> Whereas it doesn't say the key point here is that some people have have access to land as of right because yeah. it's their property, and other people own the access to that land. Yeah. Um, so you know, I I I think it would be fascinating to have um, to use this as an opportunity for those um, for for a actually a, a conscious mm -hmm. thought about this rather than a drifting into yeah, right. um, you know a whole the serfdom yeah. thing which seems to be happening. In and I think, I think yeah. the fantastic opportunity that ESOC mm -hmm. provides mm -hmm. is to have this multidisciplinary mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. national conversation mm -hmm. initially amongst researchers, but perhaps mm -hmm. a little bit wider, mm -hmm. um, so that you've got people from the different disciplines mm -hmm. um, bringing their point of view. Mm. Yeah, I think the other part is like, yeah, in combining all these, it's, it's more like improving the life quality of those uh, people living in urban areas. Because if we talk about those environmental issues, talk about health um, resources for health care service, mm -hmm. or talk about even uh, education or infrastructure or uh, housing affordability, and even if we talk about those, how people can afford all those services, and it will also include the income level of those population in the city. So I mean, um, does it make sense? So if we say the key goal is like improving the life or assessing the life quality across mm. different mm. major cities in mm. different countries. Mm. So, um, well, I think it's, it's a, still a kind of open question that we can pull into more different research topics, areas, and uh, can connect them together. Mm. I like the idea, like cross discipline, mm -hmm. cross faculty mm -hmm. um, collaboration, mm -hmm. because this definitely will generate more um, interesting and more valuable uh, research outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and a vision, because I was thinking about the issue um, that you raised about the immigration sort of element in here too. I mean, that always strikes me as a, a really interesting complex issue because um, you know when national uh, not national when Labour did that whole thing about Chinese surnames buying houses in Auckland mm -hmm. and then you get a whole group of people saying that's racist and then you get another people saying well you know spot on and then another group of people saying who cares who owns the houses in Auckland whatever um, and it seems to me as a psychologist looking at this from a sort of psychoanalytic <laughs> point of view um, my analysis of why Labour did that is that they wanted to have a completely different conversation, actually, which is a conversation about the fundamentality of having right to access of land, um, which is a real principle of that whole Labour, um, you know, one of the fundamental things you need for a good life, and one of them is access to land. Mm -hmm. And they can't have that conversation because we haven't allowed it, so they do the Chinese surnames on. Um, you know, buying house in Auckland strategy. Um, so you know that that just there's so many issues and conversations that are that are pulled in here because it seems to me we're not having the really fundamental conversations about what. And again, mm -hmm. from an interdisciplinary perspective, you can have you know all sorts of angles on um, 
on, on what that is. So a, again, as a psychologist, I would be contributing about, you know, what are the fundamental things people need to feel well and healthy and to yeah. contribute as citizens, yeah. you know, um, and, you know, other things. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Real potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And I think there are, sorry, there are many, many uh, grounded uh, fundamental readings according to what you and define as different chapters, for example, for habitat. Mm -hmm. But as I, I'm wondering that what each country can, how each country can contribute can depend on how we can culturally modify each mm -hmm. um, discussion. So. All, all those things about affordable housing exist everywhere in the whole world, but mm. uh, it's mm. it's it's very culturally it should be culturally modified. So it depends on economy. When we talk about culture, it also depends on economy. It depends on political background. It depends on the demographic information of the whole people living there. So uh, I think that the way that each country can contribute, specifically New Zealand, is and it's uh, I think it's very fresh now, and there are so many things happening now. Mm -hmm. It's how we can culturally modify to that, uh, you know, literature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, Melanie. I'm looking. I'm looking to you <laughs> just to to check on the time. I'm wondering if this is the point at which to draw this particular seminar to a close and, th and thank everybody here who's come along to contribute. Um, and uh, we know that it, it will be advertised through the SUCSI website, the availability of it. And so perhaps we'll take a rain check in a couple of weeks time mm -hmm. to, to see who's, who's popped in. Mm.